Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Well, hello everyone. I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and I will be your host this evening. So let me get through my announcements. We have these Bible studies five days a week. Um, and so let me go over the schedule so you can interact with us. On Mondays and Fridays, we have live Bible study at 10 a.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have it at 6 p.m. And bright and early Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. And that is all mountain time. I would encourage you to calculate it out and tune in while we're live. There's a reason why I want you to tune in while we're live and that is because I want you to interact with us. That's why we do it live is so that you can interact with us. So what you're going to do is as you hear Robert share this evening, and if you have questions, enter into your heart and your mind, we want you to enter those, type those questions into the chat section of whatever forum you're watching. And then about the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're going to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. Also, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they are amazing, you guys. We hear uh, supernatural testimonies coming out of the prayer center continually. So if you're going through something, maybe you just want to know what the word says in, regarding to a, in regard to a certain subject. So don't hesitate. Give them a call at 719-635-1111. And while you're on the phone with them, I would encourage you to become a partner. You can be a part of every single live stream that comes out of this ministry and is touching lives. Every life that is touched, you can be a part of by becoming a partner. So that's amazing. Uh, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. So you can become a partner or just give. Here's how you can do that. You can go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719-635-1111. Those are all my announcements that I do every time I host. And now I get to introduce our amazing speaker this evening, who is Robert Fenske. You know, Robert and Rebecca, they are originally from Canada. They did some schooling in Canada. Then they came here to Woodland Park. They were a huge uh, integral part of the school while they were here. And then they left from here and they went to Australia. And so Robert is the AWM director in Gold Coast, Australia. And his wife, Rebecca, is the director of the Karis Bible College there. So it's amazing what they're doing over there. They're uh, missionaries to the nations. Uh, it's different living on a different country away from your family, uh, living on a different continent away from your family. And so there's great reward in that, Robert. So I just want to welcome you tonight. I can't yeah. wait to hear your message. I love the title. Uh, we've been, we were talking about <laughs> before. I love the title. So let's get right into it. So I hand it over to you, Robert. Bring us the word. All right. Well, again, it's such a privilege to be here with you guys. And uh, hello to all you empowered kingdom manifestors Amen. here on this earth. Uh, I am just excited to dig into the word with you again. And um, yes, my title is Get Dressed and Stay Dressed. Hallelujah. And so it's referring to the full armor of God. And we're going to go through Ephesians chapter six. So those of you that have maybe watched the last previous ones that I've done, we talked about our authority in Christ. You're not normal. And then we've also talked about God needing soldiers. And so I felt like the Lord was impressing on my heart to go into this and just kind of go through this a little bit more and talk into uh, the full armor of God. And, yeah. uh, you know, I've, I've, I grew up in church going through this as a child. And uh, but as the Lord directed me to do this again, man, he just has really um, encouraged me and built me up in this area as well. So I believe it's going to do the same for you. Yeah. So let's get started with this. And we're going to start. I think this is probably going to be a series. We're not going to get this completed today. So we're going to start and we're just going to keep going uh, the next time. But what I wanted to start off with was, you know, when we become Christians and move into becoming followers by answering the call, follow me, Jesus says, follow me, right? Um, do you not believe that everything that we need for success when it comes to following Jesus has been given to us? Amen. Do you believe that? 
right? We do, and, you, and I'm sure you guys do, but it's a process of us walking that out and understanding that. God has not asked us to go to battle or follow him without giving us all we need for success. He, he's given us everything we need. We are never left defenseless, mm -hmm. right? Wandering around or left defenseless against the enemy, kind of wandering around without anything in our hands, naked, kind of trying to avoid the enemy and the attacks of the enemy. That should never be our mentality because we've got everything that we need, but we do have a part to play in it. Many times we don't see what we have when it comes to the armor of God. And because we don't see it, and it's a spiritual weapon, for the most part, we don't consider it, we don't think on it all the time, right? So you can't see your breastplate of righteousness, you can't see your shield of faith, you can't see um, your, your sandals of, of peace. But there is one part of the weapon that you can actually physically see. And that is your loin belt of truth, which is the word of God. And we're gonna talk about that one today a little bit more. So, what has God given us to defeat the enemy? Well, Jesus. Jesus ultimately defeated the enemy in every single way, right? Amen. And we know that. And Amen. of course, Jesus being in us, we now have Jesus Christ in us, so therefore we are victors in every situation. The majority of our spiritual armor, like I said, was invisible. So let's, let's go into Ephesians chapter 6, verse uh, 10. We're going to start at verse 10, and then we're going to go down from there. And I'm using the Amplified version this time because I liked how, how it just brought a few things apart. But it says here, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. So where do we get our strength and our power? Through our union with the Father. Everything comes from relationship with him, right? And in the power of his boundless might, man, is there a lack of might when it comes to God? No, there's not, right? We've got to see ourselves that there's no lack of, of might in, our, in, in us through Christ. And then verse 11 goes on to say, put on the full armor of God for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavenly armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. So I want to set a stage for this, and I'm going to take a little bit of time setting a stage for this because I really think it's important why we want to focus on being actively placing the armor of God in our lives. And what I want to look at first off is exactly where Paul starts this. So where does he start the scripture in verse 10? He says, in conclusion, or in the New King James Version, he says, finally. So that would, say, that would mean that there is, it is a conclusion to something that he's spoken about before right? Correct. Yeah. So it's important for us to go back and look at what was Paul talking about. Now we're going to not going to go all into that, but I do want to highlight them because I want you to see the importance of why Paul was bringing the armor of God and these attributes to our attention. So what he was talking about before that was walking in unity, spiritual gifts, the new man, grieving the spirit, walking in love, walking in, in the light, walking in wisdom, marriage, and children and parents. Now, I believe that Paul, through the Holy Spirit, understood that for us to have success in these areas, we were going to need to have an understanding of our identity in Christ and being able to apply that to our lives. This is what he's telling us, right? So you can see, like even today, marriage is under extreme attack, right? It's under a lot of attack. Walking in wisdom, man, some of us would argue that there doesn't seem to be a lot of wisdom out there right now, right? Or even children and parents. Man, that's a, that's, a, yeah. that's a big one there alone. I love what Andrew said. I've, I've heard him say it in the past. Raising the dead is easier than raising children, right? <laughs> Amen, that's right? awesome. <laughs> right? It's a challenge. It can really be a challenge, raising kids. And you know what? And Paul knew this. And so this is why he's giving us, in conclusion, or finally, he's giving us the means to be able to have victory in every single one of these areas in our lives. So it's really important for us to stand, understand the importance of these attributes. So let's keep going. Then Paul tells us to be strong in the Lord. That's the second statement he makes. How do we become strong in anything? So if you look at that phrase, uh, to be strong in the Lord, be, or be strong, Let's look at what that means there. It means to receive strength, to be strengthened, or increase in strength, okay? So when I looked at that, I, I want to I take each one of those and just kind of highlight those a little bit. So the first part was to, um, to receive strength. Well, how do we receive strength? Well, we understand that this happens through Christ and the Holy Spirit in us. 
accepting our new position and delegated authority in the family or army of God, right? Remember that you're not normal, like we were talking about before. This is simply receiving and believing. We receive strength when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. and, the, and Jesus told us that he sends the Holy Spirit to be our helper, right? Mm -hmm. So our feelings have nothing to do with this. It doesn't change the fact that God has given us strength for the circumstances, so, right? That doesn't yeah. change anything. Then it says to be strengthened. Okay, how do we be strengthened? Well, we strengthen ourselves as we meditate on the word and grow in our relationship with the Father. This is always reminding ourselves of our position. Or, you know, I've been talking about a soldier's mentality. It's the cause of why we are fighting and what we're fighting for. You know, as a soldier, a lot of times you may get a little discouraged fighting the battle, fighting the war, and all of a sudden you've got to go back and leadership comes in and goes, come on guys, remember the vision. This is why we're doing this. This is the reason why we're going to save lives and it's going to make an impact, right? That's what we do when we go back to the word. It helps us to understand the vision, the cause, the purpose, and that strengthens us, right? Amen. Then it goes on to say increase in strength. Well, how do you increase in strength? Well, our strength is increased as we apply the word of God in our lives and work out our spiritual muscles, right? You've heard this before when it comes to like faith is like a muscle. When you grow in faith, when you continually use your faith in little areas of your life, that muscle's gonna grow and it's gonna get stronger and stronger. You gotta work out, right? You wanna get some bigger muscles, you gotta work them out a little bit. And sometimes Amen. that can get a little bit tedious or you might even get a little sore, but you know what? It's worth it in the end, right? Amen. You've got stronger muscles and you're more powerful for it. Yeah. So remember also that belief causes action. So when you really believe something, it's going to cause action. Faith without works is dead, right? Amen. So Paul goes on to tell us then, and I wanna highlight this. Paul then goes on to tell us to put on the full armor of God. Now I'm gonna talk about that a little more, but I wanna highlight this phrase, put on. And bear with me, I'm setting the stage because I want you to realize the importance of this armor. So put on means to sink into or put on or literally clothe oneself. So he's literally talking in a physical sense of clothing ourselves, putting it on. Now that phrase put on, I'm going to read you two other scriptures where that shows up in the word. Galatians 3.27, it says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Right? We have Christ in us, but it's saying also when you're baptized in Christ, you put on Christ. Right? And then it goes on to Romans 13, 14. We're going to read there. It says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Mm -hmm. That same phrase there, put on. We've got to put on Jesus Christ in our lives as we're walking out our daily lives. So that why? So we leave no provision for the flesh. So again, here it's talking about we have a part to putting on this armor. So this is Paul telling us to dress ourselves and be ready for all that we may face. We need to put on the uniform or the armor that comes from God. God's given it to us for a reason and he's given it to us, but we have to understand the need for it and apply it and take it, accept it. Amen. So what does a uniform represent? And I was thinking about this and I know in the U.S. I'm pretty sure it's the same. There's uniforms all over the place. In, in Australia, it's very popular, but a uniform kind of uh, what does it do? It recognizes your association with something in particular, like an organization or a school. All the yeah. schools here have uniforms. Yeah. Um, but it also is a symbol of unity. And it's a symbol of, of that you're unified in the cause and the call that you've been called to, right? And so even when you join the army, what do you do? You get a uniform and mm -hmm. that's a symbol of who you represent. Well, we need to teach ourselves to put on our uniform daily which is a spiritual uniform, but people can see that so that the world can recognize who we are and associated with the difference so that we can make a difference. We be that light in the world. Amen. Amen. So again, this is showing us the importance of this. I'd also like to point out that we need to put on the full armor, not just a bit of it, not a part of it, not just one part of it, but the full armor. This is what Paul was talking about. Many people are fighting battles partially naked leaving gaps in their armor for the enemy to penetrate. This is where we get a lot of wounded soldiers and, and wounded people. I mean, you may have your helmet of salvation on and that's great. I mean, you know, maybe you're not gonna take a couple knocks to the head or you can bang your head into a wall, you're good to go. But if the rest of your body doesn't have any armor on it, <laughs> you're leaving yourself vulnerable, Yeah. right? Definitely. And, and so good. it's important that you understand every attribute of it and you apply it in your life daily. Yeah. So why do we need, uh, to be so um, adamant about all the armor being on. 
Paul tells us why in verse 11. So let's go to verse 11. It says, so that you may be able to successfully stand against all the schemes and strategies and the deceits of the devil. There's your answer. It's pretty plain, right? You need to understand and put on all the armor so you will be able to successfully stand against the attacks of the enemy. Well, many times we wonder why some of the attacks of the enemy are taking effect on our life. Well, we could look at the fact that maybe a piece of our armor has gotten loose or even possibly fallen off, mm -hmm. right? So if we keep looking there, without all the armor, you will have a hard time being successful standing up to the enemy. Amen. Consider this, for instance, I was thinking on this. What's the opposite of standing? Sitting. Laying down. Laying down. Right? Mm -hmm. You're standing vertical, now you're horizontal, right. you're laying down, or, and you get knocked down. How many of us feel knocked down or many times feel like we're knocked down more than we are standing? When we recognize and apply the armor of God in our lives, we will greatly lessen the times we get knocked down. We've got to learn to get up, get up, and stand, and stand our ground. We've got to keep standing. You know, 1 uh, Corinthians 15, 58 says this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We need to be steadfast and immovable Amen. as we're doing the work of the Lord. Praise God. We've been asked to stand up against. This means to actively resist the attacks of the enemy. What is your attitude when something comes against you and you stand up to something that's threatening your family, threatening your life? I mean, for me, I look to like my kids. My, something's threatening my kids, threatening my wife, threatening my family. Oh man, there's a righteous anger that stands yeah. up in me and I'm yeah. coming against it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I know I'm, I'm pretty sure each and every one of you could find something in your life mm -hmm. where you stand up against something and you're just so righteously angry about it because you're not going to let that take effect on your life or your family. Well, that's the stand, that's, that's the attitude we need to have when we're coming, when the enemy's coming to steal, kill and destroy. We've got to take that attitude of standing. You know, God can't resist or stand for you. Hmm. It's a partnership. He can stand with you and he'll resist with you, but you have to also take that initiative to stand. James 4, 7 is an example of this. What does it say? It says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You have to resist the devil, right? And, and what's the first part of that scripture? Submit yourself therefore to God. Well, what do you do when you're in an army? You end up submitting to, your, to the commanding officers, you submit to the cause, you submit to the vision, and you are part of what the overall goal and the agenda is. Amen? Amen? When you have that submission, then of course there's an authority that follows that. And it says then that we resist the devil and he will flee from us. This is huge. This is massive, yeah. you guys. <clears throat> So then let's go to verse 12. It says this, for our struggle or wrestle in the new King James version says wrestle is not against flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents. I know sometimes it feels like it's only the physical, but that's because we're a lot of times more focused on our flesh, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly spiritual places. So I want to look at that word wrestle really quickly. So what are we wrestling against? We're wrestling against forces, powers of darkness in spiritual places, yeah. right? And if we look at the New King James Version, that word wrestle, that word wrestle actually literally means, it, said, it, it means to um, a contest between two in which each endeavors to throw the other and which is decided when the victor is able to hold his opponent down um, with his hand upon his neck. Man. <laughs> We got to rise up sometimes and we've just got to realize that the the enemy doesn't have any he doesn't have any power or authority over us and when we're wrestling we take him and we just hold him down it already says that he's under jesus feet right Amen. so we've got to take that mentality and actually when paul was using that word word wrestle uh back in the roman day there that was pretty intense sport like you, th you think of mma today that was mma on steroids yeah so it was a pretty graphic example of what wrestling was but we have the victory and we need to just take that and go nope put him in his place so let's look at verse 13 and keep going here therefore put on the complete armor of god um so if you haven't noticed this is the second time that paul has said to wear the entire armor of god okay he's reminded us he said it the first time now he's reminded us a second time so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything the crisis demands to stand firm in your place fully prepared immovable and victorious 
Man, praise God. So the reason, again, Paul's saying, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to stand and be successful. In Ephesians uh, 6.13, uh, in, in the New King James Version, it says to take up. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Well, I want to look at that statement, take up. And it literally means to just take something up, literally. A thing in order to carry or use it. Well, we've got to take, up, take it up. Do we recognize the armor of God as something that we take up with the intention to use it? Amen. Not just, not just to, okay, I'm just going to put myself in it and I'm good. I'm safe. But with the intention to use it. That's what Paul's implying here. How do we use it? Well, there's definitely ways that we use it and we continue to use it. And we're going to go through that as we carry on with this series. Here we have Paul again telling us to put on and take up the complete armor of God. And I mentioned that. So let's start looking at the armor or uniform along with the weapons we have been asked to take up or put on. Amen. So verse 14, let's go to verse 14. And it says, so stand firm and hold your ground. Having girded your waist, and girded your waist is the New King James Version. And then it goes on saying, tighten the width, uh, the wide band of truth, personal integrity or moral courage around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart. Again, that was out of the Amplified Version. So, but the, the phrase girded, girded your, your waist, I want to look at that really quickly. Um, it actually means to fasten a garment or a girdle around your belt, to gird oneself, right? So putting a belt on, pretty simple. Metaphorically, it's talking about this is uh, girding yourself with truth, to equip oneself with the knowledge of truth. Man, this is a huge one, you guys. This is such a big thing in our day and age. The statement girded your loins also, and this is actually pretty interesting. The statement girded your loins is similar to this in the Bible often. So whenever that statement's used in the Bible a lot of times, it carried an urgent call to get ready for immediate action and a coming event. <laughs> so when Paul's saying that we got to put on that belt of truth, he's like, guys, it's important. You've got to put that on. So what is truth and the truth that we need to gird ourselves with? What do you think? Right? Well, we know it's the, the word, word of God. Amen. Right. God. Yes. But I want to look at that word truth because this kind of highlights a little bit to us as well. So the word truth there in that scripture says, what is true in any matter under consideration? What is the truth right under any matter under consideration? Then it goes on to say, what is true in things appertaining to God and the duties of man, moral and religious truth, which that which is why the amplified version ended up saying it came down to personal integrity and moral courage. Hmm. Right. So. In the words of Pilate, and I love this, because when Jesus was talking to Pilate, Pilate at the end of talking to Jesus goes, what is truth? Yeah. And then he goes off and he goes talking to, talking to the people. Yeah. Much of the world and many Christians are confused about what is truth these days, and God is needing us as believers to be an example of that truth. Mm -hmm. Andrew has a great series out right now called What is Truth? I highly recommend that you go uh, watch that or listen to that. I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of it. Yeah. And it's something really important today. This really shocked me. I was watching an interview the other day, and I want to share this story. And, I, and I'm not going to give out all the details, but there was a person interviewing somebody else, and they asked him on a particular topic, and they, were, they just said, look, on this topic, I'm looking for the truth in this topic. And you know what that person's response was? This, this just blew me away. Oh, no. This person said, I am uncomfortable with the word truth, and it is condescending and rude to use. Goodness, did they really? They did. They really oh did. Goodness. That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's the world that we're living in. Wow. They don't even like the word truth. They don't even want to hear the word truth because truth is whatever you think is truth, mm. which is completely so wrong. And it is not godly. And that's why we need to be a representative, representative of truth. That's why God's asking us to, to have that soldier mentality and have that be that representative of truth. So again, this is the world we're living in. John 14, 6 said this. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So who's the truth? Yeah. Jesus is a representative of truth. Yeah. John 18, 37, Jesus said this. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Right? Jesus is a representative of truth. Here's a thought to consider. As I was going through this, the Holy Spirit kind of challenged me here. 
He said, what did Jesus say there? He said, everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So what is that implying? God's voice is in truth. Amen. So if we're having a hard time hearing God's voice sometimes, maybe we have to look back to what are we believing and is our truth in line? Hmm. Right? It challenged me. I'm, maybe it's not challenging you guys. He just challenged me. That's all. Yeah. But this should make us passionate truth seekers. This is why we need to be passionate truth seekers and know the truth, right? So what is the loin belt of truth? It is the written word of God, the Bible. This is the only part of our armor that is actually seen, that we can actually see. And I would consider it to be the greatest part of our armor. Jesus used the written word of God to come against the enemy in the wilderness when the devil tempted him. He used the written word of God over and over and over again. Whenever he was confronted, it was the, the go-to, right? It's our main weapon and part of our armor. Uh, not to mention that the enemy from the very beginning has been trying to, um, what do we say, discredit every word that God has said from the very beginning. Look what happened in the garden. Did God really say that, right? That's what's been happening from the very beginning. So the loin belt though, and I wanna, I wanna quickly look at this, the loin belt of the Roman soldier armor, because again, Paul's talking about this as far as he's looking at Roman soldiers that are walking around, right? was said to be, and this was said to be the most important part of the soldier's armor because it held everything else in place. Amen. Yet it's the most unseen part. Much of the armor falls apart with the, without the loin belt being fastened, right? So the loin belt would go around the Roman soldier and the, the, uh, the sword would attach to it, the breastplate would attach to it. There'd be all kinds of things that were a, a, a huge part of that loin belt being properly in place. So if that loin belt's not in place, you're gonna find that other things start to fall apart and they start to fall off and maybe will fall off completely. They understood the importance of getting rid of all the loose ends and tucking them in because if they didn't, it could, by, it could be their demise on the battlefield. Man, do we see that in our own lives? That, you know, how, do we look at the truth that we're listening, the, the things that are coming our way and go, how does that in line with the word and tuck in those loose ends so that nothing can grab us, nothing can snag us and pull us off in a different direction and start the other armor falling off. It's so important that we have those loose ends tied up and that we are focused on knowing truth, right? Because it's the truth you know that sets you free. Amen. Uh, have you ever seen a lack of truth in your life being a deadly thing. Do you consider it that, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about that? Man, we're, if, we're, if, I'm, if I'm not believing the right thing in a particular area, I need, to, I need to smarten that up because it could cause problems for my life. You think on that, right? John, like I said, John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Every one of us must confirm God's word in our hearts we can do this by making it our firm foundation, applying it in our lives and continually looking unto Jesus. Amen. When we ignore this, when we ignore the truth, we, when we ignore the word of God in our lives and don't give it the attention that it needs, we're risking our spiritual life coming apart and our armor being less effective and possibly falling off. As a believer, the word of God has to, be, has to have the active final say so and final authority in every area of our life. It's got to be a non-negotiable. We can't allow it to be a negotiable. And we've got to continually keep tucking in that truth because that's what's holding a lot of other things in place. So a good declaration for the loin belt of truth would be this, no loose ends. We don't want any loose ends when it comes to our truth. And we want to maintain that and continually maintain that and, and understand that it's again, the word that we build our foundation on. It's the truth of the word that we build our foundation on. And that's how we also become a light in the world. We end up being that light because right now, nobody knows what truth is. But when we stand for truth, which means we're gonna have to stand, like Paul said, stand, right? We're gonna have to stand. It's maybe not always comfortable, but we have everything that we need in Christ to be able to walk that out. Amen. So that's about all we have time for today. But we're going to go through the rest of the armor next time. I'm going to try to keep going through this. So that's part one. Amen. Man, that's powerful. Um, it's, yeah, it's so good. So we got some good questions. Are you ready? 
Ah, Holy Spirit's always ready. Hallelujah. Ah, that's a good answer. So Ava on YouTube says, what do you do when you have family or encounter people in your life that say that they believe in God, but not what Jesus did for us based on what they think? And they ask, how do I know what the truth is? How should I help them? You have to bring them back to the word. Because, again, you have to put the importance on the word of God being the ultimate truth, the final say so. So you're, you're saying, you know, according to what they believe, well, we've got to get out of what we believe in a lot of say, in a lot of cases and go to the word being that's what we believe. And so you've got it. You've got to have everything back at the foundation of the word. And you can ask that you can say, OK, that's fine. That's what you believe. Where are you getting that belief from? Where does that come from? I'm, I'm open to hear where you've, you, where you've received that insight. But if it's not in line with the word, right, the word is the final say so, the authority on every area of truth. It's got to go back to the word. Amen. And, you know, the thing that's amazing to me is um, how people want to interpret even the word or interpret who God is mm. through their own experience. And I think that's a really hard thing to get away from, don't you, Robert? I mean, it's like... It's like, yes, I believe this, but maybe I didn't see it come to pass in this situation. And so now you want to start doubting whether this is true. It's a, it's oh, an, that's huge. It's an age old thing because you're not seeing yeah. something happen in your life. Absolutely. You honestly, you have to come to a point in your life where it doesn't matter what you're seeing. That's it. Because it's not about what you're seeing. It's about what is true. Yeah. Facts can change. And what you're seeing a lot of times are facts. And I'm not discrediting them. Right. But that doesn't mean that it's above the truth. And I've had to I've had to learn this myself many times. I've seen people go through things I know is not God's best and seen results I know are not of God. And I can't and I can't put my finger on it. But I, I don't deviate from the fact that it doesn't change what the word says and it doesn't change God's heart and it doesn't change his character and it doesn't change what he has said. So therefore, I just stick with the word. Amen. And that has to be um, the basis of all of it. We got to value it for the truth that it is. So Josh on chat yeah. says, if Jesus did everything for us on the cross and I did my part to do what I still have uh, to do, why do I still have struggles in my life? I've been going to church for a long time and many Christians are suffering. So he's saying, if Jesus did his part and I did my part, then why do I still have struggles? Part of that is because again, it's the renewing of the mind. Amen. A lot of what's a lot of the struggles that we end up facing nowadays is because what we've been putting into our lives. That's true. Right. And this goes into hardness of heart. Yeah. Whatever you end up putting in is what's going to come out. Amen. Right. So a lot of unfortunately, and I'm not judging anybody. I, re I reflect on my own life all the time. What am I putting into my life? Because whatever you're putting in is what's going to come out. You're putting a lot of you're putting a lot of garbage in. A lot of garbage is going to come out and it's opening a door for into the opportunity for the enemy. Amen. So are you again, are we are we actively recognizing the armor of God, placing it on our life, putting it on? applying it and using it a lot of people aren't actually using it they may apply it but then they don't actually use it and they're just getting bashed all over the place right yeah but we're, we're called to actually have that soldier mentality um julianne were, and i were talking before this we need to take an offensive position instead of a defensive position amen right yeah. we have the victory we need to move forward and so yeah there's a lot of people dealing with things and struggling with things and it's not because God hasn't given us the abilities. It hasn't. Well, look at it this way. I was thinking about this. When you join an army, right, they'll yeah. give you the weapons, the tools, they'll train you. They'll do everything that they need to do to make you a successful soldier. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, when you come into God's God's army and God's family, you've got everything. He's got an arsenal that's limitless. He's boundless in his might. Amen. Right. Amen. But you still have a part to play in training yourself and learning to to take those weapons, to apply that might, to put those things into into practice. Right. And and walk that out. It's still part of walking that out. Now, there is resting and resting in him. And that's a part of it as well. But we do have a part to play. And unfortunately, a lot of people were all going through things because of uh, most of the time, um, the things that we've allowed in our lives to influence us. 
that has hindered God from manifesting. Amen. And you know, it's interesting how a lot of people will only get in the fight. They'll only start training. They'll only go to boot camp when their whole world is falling apart, right? And so oh, yeah. that's where, like you and I were talking about, it's not being, that's more of a defensive thing. You know, it's like the enemy's coming at mm -hmm. you and you're like, oh, I guess I better learn how to fight back. And so it's getting on the offense and it's having these things settled in our heart and, and seeking God just as much in the good as when things are bad, because that's where the false doctrines come from of God put this on me to teach me a lesson so that I could get closer to him. And meanwhile, no, it's a lie. You finally started seeking God at the level that you should have been. <laughs> Don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not the time to start training when the battles are right in your yeah, face. Yeah, when you're in the uh, middle of the battle. Praise God. Yeah. You know what, guys? None of us need to feel condemned. Praise God. No. His grace is greater than that. Amen. So you know what? Even when we've we've missed things at times, God is always there and he's always there to help us through yeah. it. But you know, we say all the time, you know, it's better to live from the blessings than from the miracles. Yes. It's better to be prepared than unprepared and have to rely on a miracle. Yeah. Absolutely. Why not be prepared? Amen. And have all that armor on. Stay, get dressed and stay dressed. I like that. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. So um, let me see here. How do we speak? Oh, this is going to be good. Are you ready? They call in on the Holy Spirit here, Robert. How do we speak all truth right. <laughs> in love in, what, in the woke corporate America? Aha. Oh, this is a big one. <laughs> it is. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Ah, uh, you speak the truth of the word. You continue yeah. to speak the truth of the word. So, and I don't want to go too much into this, but unfortunately, people aren't actually seeking truth. If you actually look back into where the woke movement began and what it was actually about, it's uh, it's it's certainly not what people believe. Most people believe it to be. Yeah. There's an agenda there that's much greater. Uh, and that's the truth. So again, part of that, part of just speaking truth is, is actually knowing, right? Being able to see through the lies and deceit of what's going on in our culture today and speaking the truth. And, you know, people don't like it because it's not, they just don't like the word truth as I shared with you today already. Yeah. Um, but you've just got to be bold. You've got to be bold and be able to speak that truth in love. Uh, what have we said before? It's not, it's not up to you to reject the truth for people. Yeah. Right. So you've just got to stand your ground and go, look, this is the truth. I know this is truth. And you and you can say it in love. You can be very calm, collected. Man, I've, I've seen some excellent, some excellent things. People just just simply asking questions, very calm, very collective and and maintaining their composure. Um, and that that alone is a representation of, you know, that peace that you're that you're grounded in that we'll talk about later. So yeah. yeah, bring yourself from a position continually. Um, I'm trying to give you more of a practical illustration of doing that. Recognize the fact that God loves this person more than you can possibly imagine. Yeah. And he's wanting to give them the truth as much as you're wanting to. Amen. I, I love how you, I mean, to me, what you were sharing there, Robert, is like you speak the truth in love to the woke corporate America, the same way that you speak the truth in love at church or the way you speak mm. the truth and love in mm -hmm. your workplace, right? Because it's mm -hmm. always bringing that truth. And I was thinking the other day, it's like, you know, our society, we, there is no standard of truth, like you were talking about. And it almost mm. takes us back to when God brought the law of Moses, right? The Israelites were coming yeah. out of Egypt after 440 years in captivity um, in a nation that had no standard of right and wrong. And so God had to bring that, that, um, that law to be like, listen, you guys, this is right, this is wrong. This is good, mm. this is bad. And, and likewise, in today's society, I'm just kind of like, man, even bringing the Ten Commandments can be controversial because we've lost all standards yeah. of truth. But at the end of the day, thou shalt not steal because you hurt people when you steal other people's things. That means you don't take their money mm -hmm. because they make more money than you. Mm -hmm. That is stealing and it's wrong, <laughs> right? Amen. 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 I mean, it, it, there's a reason, there's a reason why those 10 commandments and like, you know, for instance, the, the United States yeah. and other places have used those as 
uh, a guideline for creating their their government structure. Yeah. It's not just because God said it. It's it, the fact is that it it produces life. There's a reason for it. Right. Uh, the outcome of not listening to those is not good. That's it. So. And God yeah. actually brought it out of love. That's what I love about it. He's like, do these things Amen. so that it might go well with you. If you don't steal, right. it's going to go well. If you don't murder, it's going to go well. If you don't commit adultery, it's going to go well with you. And if you do the contrary, right. uh, God, God is a God of love and we got to get that settled. So, okay, let me keep going Amen. here. Um, oh, Tim on um, YouTube had this question. He says, I have been going to church for 10 years. I have been ministering in the children's ministry for five years. I have been a good Christian, reading the word every day, helping the homeless, and I am still not healed. What else should I go? What else should I do to get healed? Mm. That's a big one. There's a lot of things. Again, there's no formula to this. Um, again, it's you said you've been a good Christian. Again, you know, Jesus died on the cross. This is by his stripes we were healed. That's not it. because we were good. Not That's because good. we deserved it. Yeah. Not because we've done everything and, and ticked the boxes that make us that good person to receive that healing. That's good. It's because of Jesus. Amen. End of story. And so, you know, again, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not saying you're looking at it this way, but you just need to rest in the finished work of God and realize it's not about your performance. It's not about what you do and how you're doing things. It's about Jesus and what he's done. Mm -hmm. And it is a finished thing. And when you start, that's, this is that place where sometimes you've got to take that position of rest. Now you stand on the fact that by his stripes, you're healed. You have to stand on that because the enemy is going to try to steal that from you and he's going to try to steal that revelation. You've got to stand on the fact that healing was done on the cross. It's a finished deal. Amen. That's never going to change, right? So you've got to settle that in your heart. Once that's settled, then you just rest in the fact that God wants to get that to you more than you can possibly imagine. Amen. It's not something that he's trying to hold from you. It's a part of the atonement of Jesus Christ and why he died on the cross. So at this stage, I would say just from what your statement was there, rest in him. Okay. Just rest. Continue. Continue in him. Rest in him. Build up that faith, right? Grow that faith and build up that faith and keep standing until you see that completely manifest and come to fruition. Amen. Yeah. And Tim, you know, I would just, yeah, that asking God to reveal to you that he didn't save you because you were great. I love that. By his yeah. stripes, you were healed. Not because Amen. you went to church and you were a good Christian. And man, that's that, that rest. That's so good. Ruthie on chat um, has this question. How do you remain patient when you have peace about something that the Lord has revealed to you? I'm not sure I understand the question. How it's, do you? Yep. How do you remain patient to see that thing come to pass? You know, like whether uh, it's God's revealed, this is going to happen in your yeah. life. How do you remain patient? Yeah. And, and I was, I was just thinking, you know, while tying in the armor of God, how do you remain patient mm. when it looks like this isn't coming to pass? Well, patience actually in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, when you look at that word patience, uh, and you look at how it's been translated, it could also be translated endurance, Amen. right? And endurance. Yeah. So you need to, it, it's a matter of just understanding that God's timing is always perfect. You don't want to jump ahead. I talked a while back about not being a, a time traveler. Yeah. You don't want to jump ahead of God's timing because it's just, you know what? God's grace will cover it, but it's, you're going to go through more than you want to. You want to do it in God's timing because it's always right. He always puts things in place. Those divine connections come together. All those things come together in God's right timing. So again, it's a matter of resting. Do you trust, do you trust God that he's going to bring that to pass at the right time and he's going to put it together? Now, your part in that is if he showed you something, uh, for instance, look, let's just use this. I'll use my life as an example. Mm -hmm. I feel God is, has, has shown me that teaching is a part of the call that's on my life. Well, and I'm working on that and I'm walking through that. But my part now would be to equip myself and better myself, become better at those things. What am I doing to become better at what God has called me to do? Amen. Not just waiting, not just waiting. He's told me, and I'm not just going to wait for all of a sudden one day, ta-da, a platform shows up and I get up there and I can hardly put a sentence together because I haven't actually prepared myself. 
Now, what he told me is right, and what he's told me is accurate, and I believe it, but I've got a part to play in preparing myself, because that's God's best. He's always preparing us for where he wants us to go. Amen. And a lot of times it takes us longer to get there because we're not willing to go through the preparation period. Amen. That's good. And that's where the endurance plays out. Are you willing to go through the preparation period? God showed you something, whatever that is, he showed you something. Now it's like, okay, now I'm going to walk that out and I'm going to prepare myself and I'm going to get to that place even quicker because I'm doing my part to believe him, trust him that his timing's right and that it's going to come together at the right time. Man, that's powerful. I love that. Yep, it's trust. Trust and patience. So we're coming down Amen. to an end of time. Thank you everyone for tuning in and sending in your questions. If your questions didn't get answered, uh, we do a lot or a question Q&A roundup. That's what it is. A Q&A roundup is so fancy <laughs> on <laughs> Tuesday afternoons at 3 p.m. where um, usually Barry Bennett will answer all the questions that didn't get asked. And what time is it again there in the Gold Coast? It's like almost 11 o'clock. Wow. In, the, in the morning. In the morning. Well, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing day, Robert. And um, all you viewers out there, make sure to tune in to Live Bible Study tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yes, I couldn't remember what day it was. So tomorrow at 10 a.m. <laughs> and you have a wonderful day, all you viewers. And you have a wonderful day, Robert. I will. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay, we'll see you all next time. Bye. God will come through. Miracles are waiting for you, but not if you stay in the boat. It is vital for the church to be the salt of the earth and have the God intended righteous influence on our culture and community. Faith doesn't give you the whole picture. God doesn't tell you every step along the way. He says, trust me. Is the finish line how much stuff you can accumulate before you die and leave it all behind? Or is the finish line standing before God? We must rebuild the United States of America, this constitutional republic under God. The time is now. We cannot wait any longer. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 